Let us begin the topic on existence and uniqueness of solutions which is a part of ordinary differential equations. We are familiar with Picard's method of successive approximations which is a numerical method used for finding the solution of the initial value problem y dash equal to f of xy y of x naught equal to y naught where f of xy is an arbitrary function defined and continuous in some neighborhood of the point x naught y naught. The key to this method lies in replacing this initial value problem by the equivalent integral equation y of x equal to y naught plus integral x naught to x f of t y of t dt. A rough approximation to the solution is given by the constant function y naught of x equal to y naught. Inserting this approximation in the RHS of equation 2, we obtain the next approximation y1 of x equal to y0 plus integral x0 to x f of t y0 dt. Again inserting y1 of x to obtain the next approximation we get y2 of x equal to y0 plus integral x0 to x f of t y1 dt. Continuing this way, at the nth stage, we get yn of x equal to y0 plus integral x0 to x f of t y n minus 1 of t dt. We can see that the successive approximations converge to the exact solution in all the problems we have considered. Picard's theorem establishes the fact that under very general conditions, an initial value problem has a solution and this solution is unique. Picard's theorem. The statement is, let f of xy and dou f by dou y be continuous functions of x and y on a closed rectangle R with sides parallel to the axis. If x0, y0 is any interior point of R, then there exists a number h greater than 0 with the property that the initial value problem y dash equal to f of xy, y of x0 equal to y0 has one and only one solution y equal to y of x on the interval modulus of x minus x naught less than or equal to h. Here we mark the differential equation y dash equal to f of x y together with the initial condition as equation 3. Now consider the proof. The first step is proving that every solution of the initial value problem 3 is a continuous solution of the integral equation y of x equal to y0 plus integral x0 to x f of t y of t dt and conversely. Fourth, suppose that y of x is a solution of the initial value problem 3. Then y of x is automatically continuous and the right hand side of y dash equal to f of x y of x is a continuous function of x. Integrating this from x naught to x we get integral x naught to x y dash of x is equal to integral x naught to x f of t y of t dt which gives y of x minus y of x naught which is y naught equal to integral x naught to x 
f of t y of t dt or y of x equal to y naught plus integral x naught to x f of t y of t dt which is the integral equation 4. Thus we have obtained that any solution of the initial value problem 3 is a continuous solution of the integral equation 4. Now conversely, let y of x be a continuous solution of the integral equation 4. Then y of x naught equal to y naught. Differentiating the integral equation we get y dash of x equal to f of x y of x. Thus the initial value problem 3 has a unique solution on an interval modulus of x minus x naught less than or equal to h if and only if the integral equation 4 has a unique continuous solution on the same interval. Let the successive approximations of the solutions to the integral equation 4 be given by y naught of x equal to y naught, y1 of x equal to y naught plus integral x naught to x, f of t y naught of t dt, y2 of x equal to y naught plus integral x naught to x, f of t, y1 of t dt, etc. yn of x equal to y naught plus integral x naught to x, f of t, yn minus 1 of t dt. Then we can see that yn of x is the nth partial sum of the series of functions y naught of x plus sigma n varying from 1 to infinity y n of x minus y n minus 1 of x. In expanded form it is y naught of x plus y1 of x minus y naught of x plus y2 of x minus y1 of x plus etc plus y n of x minus y n minus 1 of x plus etc. Because the alternate terms gets cancelled each other. So the convergence of the sequence yn of x is equivalent to the convergence of this series. Now we try to produce a number h greater than 0 that defines the interval modulus of x minus x naught less than or equal to h and then show that on this interval the following statements are true. The series 5 considered above converges to a function y of x. Second, y of x is a continuous solution of the integral equation 4 and third, y of x is the only continuous solution of 4. Now to produce the positive number h, we know that r is closed and bounded. f of x y and dou f by dou y are continuous functions on r. Hence they are bounded on r and hence there exist constants capital M and capital K such that modulus of f of xy less than or equal to M and modulus of dou by dou y of f of xy is less than or equal to K for all points xy in the rectangle R. If xy1 and xy2 are two distinct points in R, then 
by mean value theorem there exists some number y star between y1 and y2 such that modulus of f of x y1 minus f of x y2 equal to modulus of dou by dou y of f of x y star into modulus of y1 minus y2. Here, since x is fixed, we consider f as a function of y. Hence, from 7, since modulus of dou f by dou y less than or equal to k, it follows that modulus of f of x y1 minus f of x y2 less than or equal to k into modulus of y1 minus y2 for any points x y1 and x y2 in R. That is for two points lying on the same vertical line in R. We choose h to be any positive number such that kh less than 1 and the rectangle r dash defined by the inequalities modulus of x minus x naught less than or equal to h and modulus of y minus y naught less than or equal to mh is contained in r. Since x0, y0 is an interior point of R, such an h exists. Consider the interval modulus of x minus x0 less than or equal to h. Now to prove 1, it is sufficient to show that the series, we have to show that the series 5 converges. For that, we consider to show that the series modulus of y0 of x plus modulus of y1 of x minus y0 of x plus modulus of y2 of x minus y1 of x plus etc. converges. For this, first we show that each of the functions yn of x has a graph that lies in R dash and hence in R. We have y0 of x equal to y0. So the points of the form t y0 of t clearly belongs to R dash. Hence from 6 equations inequality 6 we get Modulus of f of t y0 of t is less than or equal to m. And modulus of y1 of x minus y0 of x which is equal to modulus of integral x0 to x f of t y0 of t dt is less than or equal to integral x0 to x modulus of f of t y0 of t dt since we have modulus of f of t y0 of t is less than or equal to m it follows that it is less than or equal to m into integral x0 to x dt which is m into x minus x0 which is equal to mh thus y1 of x has a graph that lies in R dash. So the points T Y1 of T belongs to R dash and hence modulus of F of T Y1 of T less than or equal to M and modulus of Y2 of X minus Y0 of X which is equal to modulus of integral x0 to x f of t y1 of t dt is less than or equal to integral x0 to x modulus of f of t y1 of t dt again 
plus than or equal to m into integral x0 to x dt which is less than or equal to mh. Similarly, we get modulus of y3 of x minus y0 of x less than or equal to mh and so on. Thus, we have shown that each yn of x has a graph that lies in r dash. Now, we estimate the terms modulus of yn of x minus yn minus 1 of x. A continuous function defined on a closed interval has a maximum. y1 of x minus y0 is a continuous function defined on the closed interval modulus of x minus x0 less than or equal to h. Let a be the maximum value of modulus of y1 of x minus y0 of x in this closed interval. Since t y1 of t and t y0 of t are two points lying on the same vertical line lying in r dash from 9 we get modulus of f of t y1 of t minus f of t y0 of t is less than or equal to k into modulus of y1 of t minus y0 of t which is less than or equal to k into maximum of modulus of y1 of t minus y0 of t that is ka. Hence modulus of y2 of x minus y1 of x can be written as modulus of y2 of x minus y0 of x plus y0 of x minus y1 of x by subtracting and adding the terms y0 of x. Now rearranging the terms we can write it as modulus of y2 of x minus y0 of x minus of y1 of x minus y0 of x which is equal to modulus of integral x0 to x f of t y1 of t minus f of t y0 of t dt because we have y2 of x is equal to y0 of x plus integral x0 to x f of t y1 of t dt and y1 of x equal to y0 of x plus integral x0 to x f of t y0 of t dt. Now this is less than or equal to integral x0 to x modulus of f of t y1 of t minus f of t y0 of t dt which is less than or equal to ka into h because we have modulus of f of t y1 of t minus f of t y0 of t less than or equal to ka. Similarly, modulus of f of t y2 of t minus f of t y1 of t is less than or equal to k into modulus of y2 of t minus y1 of t which is less than or equal to k square ah. Hence modulus of y3 of x minus y2 of x equal to modulus of y3 of x minus y0 of x plus y0 of x minus y2 of x as we have done earlier. So equal to modulus of y3 of x minus y0 of x minus of y2 of x minus y0 of x which is equal to modulus of integral x0 to x f of t y2 of t minus f of t 
y1 of t dt which is less than or equal to integral x0 to x modulus of f of t y2 of t minus f of t y1 of t dt which is less than or equal to k square ah into h which can be written as a into kh whole square. Continuing in this manner we get modulus of yn of x minus yn minus 1 of x is less than or equal to a into kh whole raised to n minus 1 for every n equal to 1, 2, 3 etc. Thus each term of the series 9 is sorry 10 is less than or equal to the corresponding term of the series of constants modulus of y0 plus a plus a into kh plus a into kh square plus etc plus a into kh whole raised to n minus 1 plus etc. We have chosen kh is less than 1. If a modulus of kh is less than 1 and hence the above series converges. Hence by comparison test the series 10 also converges to a sum say y of x. yn of x converges to y of x. Since the graph of each yn of x lies in r dash, the graph of y of x also lies in r dash. The above convergence is uniform because by choosing n to be sufficiently large, we can make yn of x as close as we please to y of x for all x in the interval. Since the limit of a uniformly convergent series of continuous functions is continuous, we get y of x is continuous. Now to prove that y of x is actually a solution of the integral equation 4, we have to show that y of x equal to y0 plus integral x0 to x f of t y of t dt. We know that yn plus 1 of x is equal to y0 plus integral x0 to x f of t yn of t dt. Taking limit as n tends to infinity on both sides we get limit n tends to infinity y n plus 1 of x equal to y naught plus limit n tends to infinity integral x naught to x f of t y n of t dt. We will prove that f of t y n of t converges uniformly to f of t y of t. From 7 we have modulus of f of t y n of t minus f of t y of t is less than or equal to k into modulus of y n of t minus y of t since the graph of y of x lies within r dash. We have proved that sequence y n converges to y uniformly. Hence, given epsilon greater than 0, there exists a positive integer n0 such that if n greater than or equal to n0, modulus of yn of t minus y of t is less than epsilon by k for all t in the interval x0 minus h, x0 plus h. Hence, from 11 we get modulus of f of t y n of t minus f of t y of t is less than k into epsilon by k that is epsilon if n greater than or equal to n naught that proves that f of t y n of t converges uniformly to f of t y of t. 
since f of t y n of t is continuous for each n, f of t y of t is also continuous. Again, since f of t y n of t converges uniformly to f of t y of t and each of the functions f of t y n of t is continuous for each n, limit and integral can be interchanged. Thus we get limit n tends to infinity y n plus 1 of x equal to y naught plus integral x naught to x limit n tends to infinity f of t y n of t dt. Thus we have obtained y of x equal to y naught plus integral x naught to x f of t y of t dt. Because limit n tends to infinity y n plus 1 of x is equal to y of x and limit n tends to infinity f of t y n of t is f of t y of t. Thus y of x is a continuous solution of the integral equation 4. Now we have to prove that y of x is the only continuous solution of equation 4 which is part 3. Assume that y bar of x is also a continuous solution of the integral equation 4 on the interval modulus of x minus x naught less than or equal to h. We will show that y bar of x equal to y of x for every x in the interval. First we will prove that the graph of y bar of x lies in r dash and hence in r. If possible, suppose that the graph of y bar of x leaves the rectangle r dash. y bar of x is a continuous function defined on modulus of x minus x naught less than or equal to h and maximum value of modulus of y minus y naught in r dash is m h by definition. Hence, there exists a point x1 in modulus of x minus x naught less than h such that modulus of y bar of x1 minus y naught equal to m h and modulus of y bar of x minus y naught less than m h if modulus of x minus x naught is less than modulus of x1 minus x naught. Hence, modulus of y bar of x1 minus y naught divided by modulus of x1 minus x naught equal to m h divided by modulus of x1 minus x naught and since modulus of x1 minus x naught is less than h we have it is greater than the quotient is greater than m h by h which is m. But by mean value theorem there exists an x star between x0 and x1 such that modulus of y bar of x1 minus y0 divided by modulus of x1 minus x0 equal to modulus of y bar dash of x star which is equal to modulus of f of x star y bar of x star which is less than or equal to m. Here we have y bar of x naught equal to y naught. y bar of x is a solution of the integral equation 4. So we get y bar dash of x star is equal to f of x star y bar of x star. And modulus of f of x star y bar of x star 
is less than or equal to m since the point lies in r dash and ends in r. So we have obtained two contradictory statements. First we have obtained modulus of y bar of x1 minus y0 by modulus of x1 minus x0 greater than m and then we have obtained modulus of y bar of x1 minus y0 divided by modulus of x1 minus x0 is less than or equal to m. This contradiction shows that no point with the properties of x1 can exist. So, the graph of y bar of x lies in r dash. Since y of x and y bar of x are solutions of the integral equation 4, we can write modulus of y bar of x minus y of x equal to modulus of integral x0 to x f of t y bar of t minus f of t y of t dt. Since the graphs of y bar of x and y of x both lie in r dash from 9 we get modulus of integral x0 to x f of t y bar of t minus f of t y of t dt less than or equal to integral x0 to x modulus of f of t y bar of t minus f of t y of t dt which is less than or equal to integral x0 to x here we are applying 9 therefore k into modulus of y bar of t minus y of t dt less than or equal to k h into maximum of modulus of y bar of x minus y of x. Hence from equation 12 we get modulus of y bar of x minus y of x is less than or equal to k h into maximum of modulus of y bar of x minus y of x. Hence, maximum of modulus of y bar of x minus y of x must be less than or equal to k h into maximum of modulus of y bar of x minus y of x for all x belonging to the interval modulus of x minus x not less than or equal to h. Then necessarily maximum of modulus of y bar of x minus y of x equal to 0 since otherwise we would get 1 less than or equal to kh in contradiction to our choice of taking kh less than 1. It follows that y bar of x equal to y of x for every x in the interval modulus of x minus x not less than or equal to h. Hence, part 3 is proved which completes the proof of Eckhart's theorem.